what exactly is the situation for public workers? The, the, the government introduced contracts some time ago. And when I asked questions, public officers could not help me to understand because the kind of question I was asking is if, if uh, and this is at the, let's say at the senior level, and the same thing would apply probably to, for, for when you're working out pensions and whatever else. If I am a deputy permanent secretary and I take a contract to work, and Kazu, perhaps you can help me understand this, and I take a contract to, to, for three years um, as, a, as a permanent secretary, and for whatever reason, and I presume in part of that contract, you have, um, you have a clause which says that they can, they can terminate the contract or you can, you can terminate it. If that is the case, do I go back to my substantive post? What happens to my salary? What happens to my contributions to pension? You see, the point I'm making is that like those kind of arrangements, this legislation has some serious implications for different categories of workers. And therefore, rather than rush through a bill to come back and do what has been the standard practice in the last few years to, to, to make decisions, put them in place and then say, hey, it ain't working. We got to pull back and, and we'll come again. Stop and talk to people, talk them through this so that they understand. Talk the ministers and MPs through it so that they understand. Mm -hmm. Because... Hey, what's up, Barbados? Hope you had a great weekend and hope all is well. It appears that some persons on the island are now calling for protest action over the issue of pension reform. Uh, some Barbadians may not get pensions, while some politicians could receive two. If you are working as a public officer and you join the service after the 1st of September 1975, and you are getting a pension from the Treasury, when you reach national insurance pension age, you, your pension from the Treasury is reduced by the amount of money you get from national insurance, except you're an MP. Can you read that? Read that again. Read that one more time, Mr. Franklin. I, I wasn't reading, but I'll tell you again. Persons who join the civil service or public service, they call it now, mm -hmm. after the 1st of September 1975, when they are qualified for pension from the Treasury, and they have a pension from the Treasury, and you're getting your pension from the Treasury, when you then qualify for the national insurance pension, the pension that you're getting from the Treasury is reduced by the amount of money you get from national insurance, except you're a politician. They still get both. They still get both. So they're thinking about everybody back about themselves. They're getting two, you know. They're getting two. And they're taking away your one. Mm. And, 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 and take, not only taking away, but get, giving a longer to get it. They get at 50. <laughs> you know, I, people always tell me, Casual, well, you should be an MP, you should be a public. I don't want to be a crook. <laughs> Now, several concerned citizens on the island have shared this view. Basically, on Friday, it appears that a bill or two bills was passed in Parliament that deals with pensions, according to our sources. All right. Now, according to the sources, there are no calls for protests on Wednesday. There's a call for sick out and so on. It also appears that people think there is some veil over the island and that uh, Barbadians have lost their fighting spirit. And this appears to be the case in the Caribbean where these tyrannical governments are disguised as democratic governments. I think in order to fully grasp what is really going on is to look at it and review. There's an old African saying, if you want to know what's going on in the road up ahead, you want some more returning. But let's look back a little bit. In 1966, what was one of the most significant things that happened in Barbados outside of national insurance? It was independence. Independence. Exactly. So, well, what exactly was independence? You see, if we never fully grasp what happened in Barbados in 1966, we can never really appreciate what the national insurance scheme, sorry, scam, well, whatever it is, <laughs> we can never really appreciate what it truly represents. And think about it, for example. 
people who would have bought into this idea in 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, who would have then qualified automatically because of the age they were at and received the pension from those who are now paying into it, recognize that that wouldn't have lasted but so long unless we continue to pay into it. Now, the, 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 the age limit of people expectancy, life expectancy in Barbados has changed significantly from the days of the plantocracy, which was about 20, 25, 30 years old, if you're lucky. So now they're asking us to be 60, 65, well, in some cases, 68. And you juxtapose that with the Bible, who say you're supposed to live until 70. Understand what they're really saying in a different language is that we want to work you to death. The only other circumstances where you work to death was on the plantation. So if we want to do a juxtapose, let's look at it this way, Mr. Franklin and Ms. Ford and Marcy, I'm sure you can understand this. Ms. McLean. Ms. Sorry, Ms. McLean of Ford. Where did that come from? Ms. McLean, the reality is that Barbados is still functioning as a plantocracy. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not is irrelevant. And the only way out of it, you have to ask yourself one of two questions. Am I looking for comfortability on the plantation or am I looking for liberation from the plantation? You, a people, anyone, any governing body that desires to keep you from thriving and doing better is looking to enslave you. The reason why they even put this this weekend in light of the four day, the two day holiday and whatnot, it's almost like an insult to the intelligence of Barbadians. And the prime servant said, you know, we are ready to come and walk up. So come and walk up. So mm -hmm. what they're telling you is that, in fact, there's a play called um, Caliban. I don't know if you ever heard it by Shakespeare. It's called Caliban. Most Barbadians probably never heard of it. I don't know. Maybe not. But what was said to Caliban is that the only thing you need to do with Caliban is give him some booze. I guess on a woman, and he ain't going to remember nothing, man. And I, I yield with that. You know, we got to be mindful of the times we're in and recognize what they're really looking to do is re-enslave Barbadians in a whole different way. And unless we are honest about this and work towards liberating ourselves and leave Egypt, we're going to be stuck in Egypt with the Pharaoh working and we'll have no say. And yes, I think both of you said it, and I'm, I'm, I'm certainly Marcy said it, they're going to work you to death. You will not collect no, insur no insurance. It will not be passed on to your family. And trust when I tell you, you are going to die not receiving nothing. And, and I yield with that, Marcia, for the time. Yeah. So that's what's going on in Barbados. But it also it appears that excess debts are occurring on the island and no one is talking about it. But we are going to address that in our next video. So to be sure, join us in